Yes, coach, you can start. Yeah. Uh, please confirm my screen is visible or not. Yes, physical. Yeah. Yeah, visual. So, uh, today we can start with that uh, coverage and network request blocking. So, what happens? Means sometimes we follow that in our code base, the JavaScript or CSS file. Kaushik, your voice is very low. Now I am. Hello, hello. Am I audible, right? Yeah, now it's clear. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So today I'm going to start with the coverage and network request blocking. This is very yes. essential because sometimes we observe that in our code base, uh, some codes uh, blocks in CSS or JS, some code blocks are working and some code blocks are not working. Means uh, the execution part in the same code base something is working and some portion is not working so that can also be traced out and also some network request blocking means when some calls are uh, going to server side that request we also can disable from the dev tool this code may this structure or these uh, tricks we can also use that sometimes we uh, we are designing the registration form right in the registration form, so all time the server side uh, hits are working or going on. So that can also be, uh, we can stop while we are debugging the code base. So let's see that how coverage and network request blocking. So in the one application or You can see this is the coverage tab and these coverage tabs are available, available for more tools, these options and network request block. Two things are here. The coverage, when we hit this, the capture button. Yeah. You can see that some red portions code are coming and some uh, other, uh, the codes. So when I click on that page, right, I'm taking this this page. So where we can see that this person is not executing over here. That means we cannot uh, remove that person, but we can also trace that how many pages are in which block are executing and which block are not executing. So this is in the coverage if you get in the JavaScript file. So these red blocks are not working, means not used in this page. Same in that also that we can use the style.js. So that is so many codes are here using, but this person are not using. So these comments are there. So try to optimize the page. You can also trace out from this coverage block and also try to optimize that person that which are not exactly or not using in the code base. So in uh, entire files like JS and CSS, the all all places the you can see the JS all pages coming from JS right, and you can also download this coverage summary over here. You can export this summary, and you just coverage summary. You can also save it, okay. And you can also download the coverage summary if you open in the browser. You can see the range uh, from where the start in every process that the entire code the summary of JSON they will execute it that this page. 
this is uh, also test out the memory how much is using and how uh, where the start point and end point that is also there okay and uh, sorry. and one more thing so in my network tab if i go and So in the network tab, you can see that two uh, network are uh, there, means user JSON that the, this uh, block, we can also explicitly uh, uh, block from that network request block. And that if I will add this thing and go copy the link address and paste, saying the already exist. So, uh, you have to remove first all the things and try to do it again. Uh, copy, copy link address and go to paste it and add. Now when I try to run this page, you can see that blocked by dev tool. So your enter code is not working. Means it stopped from the dev tool. So we can also handle the need of request blocking from our code base. And one small thing also add that is called the layers. Uh, layers you uh, can find out the entire summary of your document. That uh, you can also it is not uh, very useful, but even uh, here you can got all the layers of your how much how many layers are there in the application so if i will go these applications or any these applications and and i will go to the layers so see that pages we can also get uh, the layers how uh, the layer style and also the Composition, region, and the size of the document you can also get. The layers you can also get. This is not very useful, but it's there. And uh, in the console block, the console we can also pretty uh, it's showing very beautiful way in that this console. Um, and it's, so in that page, the same page what I used earlier. Uh, Kaushik, uh, we are not able to hear you clearly. Uh, now, uh, my actually the mic is not. No? Hello? Can you right? No? Hello? Am I audible? You are audible, but voice is not clear. So, uh, try. I'm trying to. Yeah, now, now it's fine. Now it's fine. Now it's fine, right? So, yeah. yeah, yeah. And you can see that resize method I add in the page. The simple resize method. When the window I will resize, that time this method is executing. But these things I also monitor from the console log. So. If I go to the console and instead of console.log, I use the monitor. The monitor, if I will uh, copy the method name, resize method, and 
paste over there. You can see undefined means it's, uh, I, I will resize. You can see the objects are function resize method called. So as per my resize, this method also be monitored. So this way we are also monitoring our functions. Not only that, all time we are using the console.log. Instead of console.log, we are using monitor this method. So you can see that every time this, how much we are uh, just resize the browser that time it is calling. So this one way we can also debug. And one thing also the console.log, we can um, uh, present our console in very beautiful way. So in the console dot table we are using uh, here, here. writing some name. can see that it's as a table format we can also get the value uh, array to array so you can also create some function and also print out in the console dot log instead of console dot log we can use in the console dot table we can also uh, produce our output in the con con console dot table one minute one minute, one minute. Ashik, you are on mute. Sorry. Hello. Yes, Kaushik. Yes. Kaushik, I have one question. So basically, what is the use of console.table in our main project? So console.table means sometimes some uh, you can so, some uh, you can all uh, means some console are uh, you are uh, print out uh, printing in the uh, in the table right uh, in with instead of normal printing so you can also uh, use that console dot table it's a presentation way not any use case of there so if any functions you are writing in the console that how much uh, the uh, the is is there any nested loop or not or is there any nested function or not you can easily trace out from the console.table instead of console.log. Okay. Okay, got it. This is the main purpose. Actually, um, present in a good manner, good way. That's why console.table is there instead okay. of console.log. Okay. okay. And we can uh, get the lighthouse tab. Lighthouse tab is very useful. You can see that uh, the categories are performance. PWA of the applications, progressive wave app, if we are using our accessibility and SEO and the device is there, two device, mobile or desktop. 
so if we also generate the reports from our lighthouse tab earlier it was called the audit tab now it has been changed the lighthouse tab so if we create the generate report so what happens you can see that lighthouse is loading the page so it's a web dev tools this is also the analyzing tools of the components uh, or the how page are working page loading the performance the it, it, it can also test out so you can see that it's gathering all information of the page and it will generate the report in your console take some time because the report has been produced or generated and you can see that report. you can see in that page in the login page the accessibility is 100 percent best practices using the 92 percent the performance is there some performance issue also there so Quick click, you can see the entire summary of that each and every tab in accessibility. The best practices are there. So, are showing the best practices. And if I show the performance tab, so here is showing that past content in 13.3 seconds. So, the performance score. You can also click in this tool. We have dot date this performance. Uh, matrix calculator can also get the matrix calculator. You can see the HCP fast content pin, LCP the largest means when the fast pin is there means uh, some gjs are working some html are there so all the building blocks in the applications so this is called the lab lcp and fcp first content means <clears throat> when the page is loading that time how much uh, how much js and css are trying to uh, getting load in the page and try to paint the applications the html paint so this is called the FCP. So this value also be there. And device type, you can see the desktop. You can also change the device type. So you can also test out this value. And you also create the new report. And it, it, you can change the page and every time create the generic report options. It's also helpful to understand that page performance and uh, how we can improve the page performance issues over there and this is the lighthouse tab another important tab this is the performance tab again it's the performance tab but also here you can get the exact summary of the performance that how css js applications your networking are working or uh, networking uh, they are how much they are transferred the call so this uh, performance you can get can click this button the same page it takes some time because the page is profiling so the profiling uh, actually shows us that which function or process uh, takes most of the time and uh, runtime performance uh, and that the exact summary of the performance so that's why it takes some time the profiling is going on 
and it's a big application so it takes us quite some time And, and stop over here. You can see the screenshot means the paint of the every paint is rendered over here. And also the scripting means I'm not. It's not a totally loaded. That's why the summary uh, all summary are not coming. I'm again try to load. Application also click it. You can see in the summary in scripting. If I click and the total donut chart are showing. <coughs> so scripting it takes 951 milliseconds. Loading 103 milliseconds. So in the bottom up approach, you also get it. So you can say that parse HTML. It takes 398.0 milliseconds. Evaluate script, the parse HTML. So you can also filter out means group by activity you can see activity wise log they are also providing so javascript so this way you can also understood that which block or group has taken so much time and also you can see that this is the nodes at there the interaction timing the frames how much frames and the gap how much timing is there so everything is logged over there through some beautiful designing site so you can see some page are white right and there's loading are coming so this way you can take that total page and loading is there any question Hi Kaushik, uh, Shoaib here. Yeah. So, um, I saw the accessibility 100% showing in the air. So wh what are the uh, scope that evaluated? I think WCAG 2.1 double A or single A. What is the cover in that uh, coverage? Well, uh, I saw this thing. Can you please tell me? In accessibility, uh, how how the um, test uh, co cover the accessibility scenario in hundred percent color contrast or uh, that just depends on your, uh, that depends on your business uh, logics and how different. Depends on your. that codes uh, how we are using right okay yeah uh, these are also included chase him means how the call stack how many call stack are there and how many call stacks are executing one by one so this also be logged out over here okay So I think accessibility, uh, this kind of things, you also get from that lighthouse section, not the performance section, right? You can see. Okay, so, um, deployment is going on, right? Okay. And
the next thing i will go uh, that uh, one tool that is your sentry so this is the um, sentry.io this is very helpful to log uh, your debugging and log the errors over there so this is the paid tool but the free trial options also be there so you can also connect your application uh, with that local applications to the uh, with the sentry so we can also uh, get some logs over there so this is the code you can also test out so in case you are using these uh, tools in your uh, application so we can use that uh, this sentry here npm start install this uh, react and tracing these two things you have to install in your application react application and then you have to initialize the to tokens these tokens if you logged in that token you will get and that token you have to add over there and integration the browser testing will get and i have also tried to get these things i've initially add one this is normally one one click method there is no uh, Kaushik, kindly check your net connection. Right, right. Suppose your yes. net is lacking or something. At least for me, it is lacking. I don't know about the others. Um, right now, your voice is clear. Before that, uh, it was not. Okay, now, now it's fine. Actually, uh, uh, today some fluctuating is there inside. I think that. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> oh, so I don't know. Means uh, previously I was taken one session, right? So that mm -hmm. time. There is no any problems. I cannot find. No, no. Now, now your voice is clear. Oof, one minute. Yeah. Uh, uh, not defined in the page that same log I'm trying to yeah, you can see um, it's automatically spinning up in this log I think okay, the issues are uh, logged over here trying to add this thing then this type of means you can also get the errors over there so you can also connect it's a free not a free tool it's a paid tool 
and some you have to use this thing you can see the reference error are coming so this way we can also debug the application and we also logged in that I mean, it is also the uh, this is the how sum, sum, summary of the page the uh, the to, how much how many errors are there in the page we can and which type of error the reference error we can also test out in that case so this is a third th th party tool and we can also uh, test out this way okay one minute try to again log in over here Uh, so in the lighthouse, I'll also try to generate the report once again. So this is the accessibility. Here, I think all accessibility mentioned over here. One minute, it's not scrolling down. Yes, yes. yes. This audit server. Hello, Swip. Hello. Yes, yes, Kausik. Yeah. I can see, right? This is the yeah, yeah. Uh, area authorized. This or scroll down. Or swing. One minute. Image or text. You can see okay. the all methods are uh, means they are covered. That's why it's showing hundred, right? All okay. attributes, so the image tags, user accessibility, everything is covered. This is the total summary. You can also toggle down and also the get the issues. Okay, so these all things are covered over here. Yeah, yeah, got Understood. it, got it. Yeah, so all got things it. you can means HTML element have the lang attribute. So this total summary, they are also taken and which is the best use cases. And if you go the best practices, they're also seeing that. That not applicable is on display optional or preloaded. So that type of things, the best use case, they're also provided. This is this tool. Lighthouse, you also get from that external way, you will also get this, this tool, Lighthouse in Chrome. Okay. So, Available in the Chrome Dev Store. If some websites or some uh, browser they are not get the Lighthouse tab, they are also add to the Chrome. By default, it's coming Lighthouse tab. Somewhere it's not included, so you can also get this tab, right? Now, uh, one another thing is that uh, your uh, Hello. Yeah, this is the React Deep Tools. React Deep Tools, you all, all know that uh, you can also, in, in HTML, when the application is React side, so uh, it's parse the deep or CSS HTML tags, okay? But how to find out the exact component? 
so so that's why they are using the redux dev tool redux dev tools also helps to improve uh, that the on uh, your browser logging time so you can also see that in that application um, uh, so logged in Okay, stick sometime and go to the other applications. So you can see this that React and Redux example I've created. And in that case, uh, our components. You can see that React, it's a React dev tools where you can understood that component, which component are using, how they are nested, the routing part, all things, the link. There is a link or not this summary you can also get the real deep tools so everybody you can use in our day-to-day -day life in these tools and you also debug from here because in the react application main challenges is that in the elements we cannot find out the exact uh, what we are going to find out so that time all are replacing with the deep css classes but exact apply, uh, component from where it's coming, so we can also get this reactive tools. Okay, you can also check the provider how many things, uh, the links, everything is coming. And with that, one more thing is uh, in one important thing is that Redux Dev Tools. This is a React Dev Tools, and if the application is using Redux, that time. Uh, one Redux Dev Tools also be there. So this is that. Open your panel, and we are, if we are trying to, we can feed that. It takes some time to load. I think is not adding. Enable in browser city. Yeah. Application not working right. Time which one minute. Mm. I'll try to hit um. 
I'm trying to run it again. I think some problems are there. Set Still, API also working on it. Cheap, yeah, API side. Thank you. 
okay the api is not working that's why uh ideal state to see also see i load the dashboard in the time the error is coming from the api side so not working okay one important thing is that web vitals these things i want to cover web vitals so web vitals what it uh, it says we are a built in tool in the react you can see when you using the uh, react applications so that time Uh, report web vitals right this is these things we can also get the uh, if we console dot log in the report web vitals so how uh, the content and how the js how much uh, fast content is working or not that we can also test out so it's divided into three parts largest content pool paint that is called lcp and fast input delay fid and that cls so these things we can also test out through the web vitals so uh, in web vitals some of the applications we have uh, got yeah in these places now try to see that we have tools how it is working it was i think the No, okay, the, now the piece I mean. So before going to the file, please the readers dev tools and said yeah. So this is my page and if I will to trace the reader details like it's coming and you can see that all the state API queries we can also log down about that even if I click that and I'm 
The states are logged out. Koshik, you are on mute again. Hello? Yes, Kaushik, your article now. No, I think I'm not mute there at time. So some problem was there. I don't know. No, how. no worries. Now your article. <laughs> so well, this is the... Uh, one minute. 
Kaushik, you need to share your screen. Yes, yes, yes. Now my screen is visible. Please uh, confirm uh, anybody. Yes, visible. So this is the last part of that uh, debugging section. That the web vitals. So you can uh, when I refresh the speech, FCP and TFP means that fast content printing in the page. So that also we can trace out. And when I click the page, the FID when I click also be traced to the web vitals. So these three parts, FCP, another part is your TTFP, another part is your FID. So this console.log, if I will provide it through that web report web vitals at console.log, and then this result will be produced in the console. And you can also get some analytics, some Google analytics or any other analytics tools you can also use for its uh, graphical user interface that console now. Is there any questions? Hello? Hello? Hello, Pia? We are rushing there. We are here. We are here. So, uh, any yes, questions, any doubts, any queries? No, 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 no. Okay, then last most thing is there your um, root cause analysis. So, root cause analysis is very important and any very vital part in, a, in any debugging case, right? means it not be dependent on the software uh, development uh, industry. Other industries also root cause analysis is there. So what happened? Some problems we are not tracing out means we all followed, uh, we, we follow all the concepts. Means we are trying to add the debugging process. We are trying to improve our optimization process, but still some problems are there. We cannot identify the what is the cause. So uh, this we are um, dividing these parts into symptoms, right? So you can see that root and, and their uh, symptoms is there. So three things we have to remember that what happened and why it happened and find the root cause. So this bigger problem we can summarize into th some clustering, some grouping parts. That's the problem number one some problems it's uh, we can also test out problem number two problem three this is called the symptom so all symptoms we can jot down in one place gather the data and try to analyze its root cause root cause analysis is very vital and it's also helpful to analyze the entire application it's, a, it's not dependent on the software industry it's the, everywhere every industry it's automobile industry or banking, insurance, everywhere some root cause is there. So we all uh, trying to establish the main cause. We all uh, effort, uh, provide our efforts to finding out the uh, cause, but we cannot find out. So that's why root cause analysis is very vital. And second part is that it has, it has some life cycles. It has some process. Define the problem. You have to collect the data. Define the problems means what problems you have to face and which kind of problems you have to uh, is included in the as a nested loops. So define the problem, collect your data, identify possible casual factors, which factors mostly you understood that this is the problem. But the, if you are trace out that this might be, might be or might not be problem. 
can identify the root cause and recommend and implement the solution. This is five steps. These steps we have to follow in our root cause analysis. And you can see, I I, I have faced one root uh, one challenge in in my previous organizations. There I implement I have uh, implemented one dashboards through the React, and my responsibility was in the big data and the front end application. That these two parts I I have majorly observed over there. So uh, this was the step, the process, like uh, in uh, the, uh, the process was there, the data is flowing, data was creating through big data, the Hadoop, Hadoop interface was there, and same data we are uh, gathering in the cloud architecture, in the Azure, in the data lake bricks, and then middleware was Java, and front end we are using the React application. So what happened? Once means we are uh, uh, using uh, these all five four big big app architecture process. So in in dashboards we see that uh, suddenly some graphs and some charts are not displaying properly. So what we all trying to recover the problems that where is the problem how we can solve. So big data we are going to solve the Hadoop infrastructure the main node cluster node main node everything but there the data flow is working very properly so finally we are finding out the json which was produced from the java some gap some uh, and some json was not nested so this means we are going to analyze the api api also producing the result but some problem was that json formatting that we are not tracing we, we have taken two or three days to find out the problem so everything, the data flow is there. We are first assume that data was not coming from the cloud. So Azure was providing the good uh, place where data lakes were also working. We also debugging the page. There, there is no problem, no problem in the Java side. But main problem was the some space. One is the JSON. JSON was not nested, and uh, we are using the high charts in the React. So that time what happened that high charts only accepted the nested JSON, formatted nested JSON, the nested JSON was not there. So that root cause, this problem we have analyzed and that's called the root cause. Means we, this, some flows are there, some architecture over there, we have to sort out and we have to come in one solution. So that is the root cause analysis. So I think debugging is the process where we have to analyze our, we have to apply our skill set we have to know that what which step we are going to take and which steps we are not going to take or the all the applications we have to debugging properly that chrome have provided many supports the debugging tools we are the chrome dev tools and that's why we can also improve the debugging debugging, application, debugging uh, process so debugging is very important and uh, we it can optimize the means it reduce the error not only reduce the error it also build a good application, good solution of code base. Is there any questions for that part? That for my end. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly. So, is there any questions for the root cause analysis of this kind of thing? You understood, right? Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Can we repeat that uh, again? That point, root cause, uh, like in a. Uh, yes, root cause analysis means you have one problem okay means you are finding out the solution one bigger problem you are uh, working in one application so it's not dependent on the software industry it can be anywhere okay root cause is coming means uh, you have to come out with one solution but is there many problems okay many symptoms what the root cause the uh, why the root cause was there what is the problem and so many symptoms over there means in my in my application i have using that big data cloud and the java application so they are big architecture project okay 
so some problems over there so we have to find out the actual cause and some problem might be your, is your cloud some problem might be your middleware some problem might be your front end okay so root cause means is common problem you have to identify from the various problem solving debugging scheme and come out one solution so that is the root cause analysis might be it's a small error but you are not finding out the right solution right it takes two to three days so where all expertise are they are, they, they are given their 100 percent effort for finding out the fault but they are unable to find out that time you are going to not debugging you have to find out the root cause through the analysis process okay okay consider okay. yes that's from my end okay and if any questions you can ask or anything or otherwise you can stop the session So I think debugging is a process where uh, we have to practice in many optimized way. We have to find out the, uh, because in a normal, normally we cannot find out the problem, the solution, but Dev tools are providing so many supports to find out the solution with a good less amount of time. So we can save our time also. So it's a practice. We can also practice these kind of things. So find out the solution and solve the errors and improve the code architecture. I've, yeah, hello. I think from my end, I have finished all the things, all the topics. Uh, can we get the recording of that? Yes, uh, recording, recording is yeah. recording is there. It it might be available after uh, some hour. Okay, one okay. to two hours. Yeah, we'll uh, guys, yes, the recording would be shared with you by tomorrow because as I stop the recording, uh, I suppose question are done, right? I yes, 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 yes. If any questions, I still have I mean, uh, here within two or three minutes. If any questions, any